Hello, I'm Stan Lipkowitz, the branch chief of the Women's Malignancies Branch at the National Cancer Institute. Hi, I'm Yoshimi Gure, staff scientist in Women's Malignancies Branch, National Cancer Institute, NIH, Bethesda, Maryland. I'm the first author of the paper. So today, we'd like to talk about our work with a novel class of drugs, first described as, on, uh, as a drug called Onc-201, and a paper we published on that demonstrating a novel mechanism of action whereby the drugs target the mitochondria to kill breast cancer cells. Now, our interest in this drug really derives from a very long-standing interest that we've had in studying trail-mediated apoptosis through death receptors in breast cancer cells. And so we read with a lot of interest the paper published by Wafik Eldieri's group, which described a small molecule, which they called onc 201 which activated transcription of trail in the cancer cells. And then the cells would produce their own trail and kill themselves via the trail receptors and induction of apoptosis. So this to us was a novel way of inducing the trail system in breast cancer. But when we began studying it, one of the very first things we found, and this is described in both figure one and the supplementary figure one in our paper, was that the trail pathway didn't seem to be involved at all. In fact, we don't think that apoptosis was uh, what is the mechanism of action of this drug. So in particular, what we found is that the, the drug did not activate caspases. If you inhibited caspases with a pan-caspase inhibitor, the drug still killed cells, whereas trail was activates caspases and, of course, is inhibited by caspase inhibitors. Furthermore, we knocked out the trail receptors and the drug still killed the cells. And again, trail, of course, can't kill the cells if its receptors are gone. So this left us with a very interesting observation. We had a drug that killed breast cancer cells and it seemed to kill all types of breast cancer cells, but we didn't know the mechanism of action. And at this point, I'll turn to Yoshimi and let her describe how we discovered the mechanism of action uh, for these drugs, for this okay. drug. Okay, thank you, Stan. So as Stan mentioned, we did not observe any evidence that onc 201 kills breast cancer cells through death receptor mechanisms. So we tested if other cell death pathways such as necroptosis, autophages are induced by onc 201. However, as shown in our supplementary figure, we did not detect any evidence of necroptosis nor autophagy. This made us wonder what signaling pathway is dysregulated by onc 201. At that time, two independent groups reported that stress markers such as ATF4, CHOP are induced by onc 201 in multiple cancer cell lines with unknown mechanism. Consistent with these papers, we observed that ATF4 and CHOP are induced by onc 201 in our breast cancer cell lines, as shown in figure two. Then I wondered, what makes cancer cells so stressed out? Looking at the, the cells under microscope every day, I thought these cells look literally tired. So then I wondered, maybe these cells are out of energy after onc 201 treatment. When it comes to energy, AMPK, AMP activated protein kinase is known as an energy sensor. As you know, ATP is the energy source for every living cell. When ATP level is low in the cell, AMPK senses that energy deficit and gets activated. As shown in figure two, we detected AMPK phosphorylation was induced by onc 201 in parallel with induction of stress markers, ATF4 and CHOP. This data indicated that cells are facing low ATP level after onc 201 treatment. I think this MPK activation finding was a critical starting point of this entire story. Subsequently, we confirmed that cellular ATP level is depleted by onc 201 treatment in multiple breast cancer cell lines. At this point, it became clear that energy deficit seems to contribute to cell death in breast cancer cells. But the next question was how onc 201 reduces the cellular ATP. In a cell, ATP is generated by two mechanisms. One is glycolysis, the other is mitochondrial respiration by electron transport chain. To dissect these two sources of ATP, we tested the effect of onc 201 in the presence 
or absence of glucose. In absence of glucose, cells can only rely on mitochondrial respiration as a source of cellular ATP. As a result, as shown in figure 2, cytotoxic effect was significantly enhanced in absence of glucose. This indicated that onco 201 targets mitochondrial ATP production. Then we investigated the effect of onco 201 in mitochondrial mitochondria with multiple different approaches. First, we used Seahorse XF analyzer and confirmed that onco 201 inhibits mitochondrial respiration as shown in figure 3. Interestingly, the inhibitory effect of onco 201 was not as rapid as oligomycin that directly inhibits complex 5 in electron transport chains. It required a few hours to see the inhibitory effect of onco 201 This suggested that onco 201 does not directly target electron transport chains. We also applied isolated mitochondria and confirmed that onco 201 does not induce acute changes in mitochondrial respiration. We also looked at the impact of onco 201 on mitochondrial structures by multiple imaging analysis. As shown in Figure 4, we detected that onco 201 induces mitochondrial fragmentation and loss of mitochondrial membrane potential. Electron microscopy imaging revealed significant mitochondrial structure damages such as matrix lysis and crystallysis, mitochondrial swelling. These mitochondrial damages were detected as early as three hours after onco 201 treatment. Interest interestingly, electron microscopy examination revealed that other cellular organelles such as endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi, nucleus remained intact until much later time point. This observation further suggested that onco 201 is specifically targeting mitochondria. To test this hypothesis, we looked at mitochondrial DNA as a specific marker of mitochondria. As shown in figure 5, picogreen is a fluorescent molecule that visualizes both nuclear and mitochondrial DNA. But onco 201 treatment decreased picogreen signal only in mitochondria. Using a quantitative PCR, we confirmed that onco 201 depletes mitochondrial DNA copy number and this effect was specific to onco 201 and was not observed with other mitochondrial target drugs such as oligomycin, metformin. Next, we questioned what about the effect of onco 201 on non-cancerous cells? We tested onco 201 on human foreskin fibroblast HFF cells. As shown in figure 6, HFF cells were onco 201 resistant despite mitochondrial structure damages and mitochondrial DNA depletion. Further studies showed that HFF cells are not highly dependent on mitochondrial respiration. Therefore, targeting mitochondria does not affect cell viability of HFF cells. This observation prompted next step. step. Lastly, we hypothesized that cancer cells not dependent on mitochondrial respirations are onco 201 resistant. To test this, we used multiple models. One was renal cancer cell line UK262 FH negative, exclusively glycolysis dependent cell line due to genetic mutation of cumulate hydratase, an enzyme in TCA cycle. Other model was breast cancer cells that lack mitochondrial DNA. As shown in figure 7, these cell lines were not dependent on mitochondrial respiration and completely onco 201 resistant, supporting our idea that onco 201 is specifically targeting mitochondria. In conclusion, we confirmed that onco 201 kills breast cancer cells by targeting mitochondria. Last year, in 2019, two groups reported that onco 201 targets mitochondria as an agonist of mitochondrial matrix protease CLIP-P. These studies further solidified our discovery.
With this, I would like to hand this over to Stan to summarize remaining questions we would like to address. Thank you, Yoshimi. And again, I think this was a very detailed and comprehensive study really piloted by Yoshimi in our lab. So there are a couple of interesting observations. We also had come to the conclusion that clip P protease may be important, but we had not been able to conclusively prove that when the other groups had published it. In addition, there are other molecules in this family that also do the same thing. And these drugs called the TR compounds from a company called Madeira and other related compounds from Oncoceutics all are CLIP-P agonists. So it's a novel class of drugs with a novel mechanism of action for killing cancer cells. And in addition, so that leaves several questions that we would like to answer. Probably a very important question, as Yoshimi alluded to, we've ruled out apoptosis, necroptosis, and autophagy, and several other mechanisms as the mechanism of cell death. We still have not uh, defined then how the cells, how the targeting CLIP-P and the disruption of mitochondrial function leads to cell death. And that's, an, I think, an important question to understand. Another very important question for the application of these drugs in the clinic is what determines if a cell is or isn't dependent on their mitochondria and therefore will be sensitive to such drugs. For example, as we showed in our paper, cells that lack critical TCA cycle uh, components such as FH or fumarate hydratase are absolutely resistant to these drugs because they really don't depend on their mitochondria. So I think it will be important going forward to be able to identify features of cancers that suggest that these drugs will be useful. Now, it may either be subtypes of cancer or either subtypes of the cells in a cancer, um, in a particular cancer population that are sensitive, but I think that's a critical if we're going to apply these to patients. And so with that, I think this work has defined a novel mechanism of action of a class of drugs. It's been furthered by the other groups which identified CLIP-P as the target. And I think there's a lot of work, but a lot of excitement about this novel target in, in cancer cells.